as you can see, my name is Gary Ryan. I am based in Dublin in Ireland. Um, I flew in on Thursday and having a great time in Greece so far. Thank you very much for your hospitality and welcome. And today I'm gonna to talk about HubSpot um, and take you through some examples of customer success cases and what our platform is and answer any questions if, if there are any at the end of the talk. So um, we're gonna kick off. Do I have, a, I have the kicker here? Sorry. So. So, I'm going to take you through a quick intro, my own background briefly, why HubSpot, our own evolution as a business over the last nearly 20 years, our partners, of which we have some in the room today, and I'm grateful for their attendance and support, and our customers as well, and some customer success stories. So, quick background about me, as you can see, I'm not a digital native, because I was probably born before nearly before the internet was born itself, but I've worked in a variety of traditional and more modern type companies and brands. So I've been with Diageo for seven years, running their sponsorship programs, moved into the Caribbean in a mobile phone company, then I worked in radio for about five years. I worked in sports management, I worked in airlines, then Oracle, so I'm really only in tech about five years, but it's a great place to be, really enjoying it. Um, in case any of you think I've had a lot of jobs, I'm in my late 40s, so that's why I've had a good few jobs over my careers. So, who has already heard of or tried HubSpot? We have a couple of hands, very good. We'll have to get a few more hands by the end of the day. So, uh, what is HubSpot? HubSpot is a customer platform which connects everything a scaling business needs uh, to deliver best-in-class customer experience in the one place. And the one place is the key thing we're always talking about, all your data in one place, which really makes it a lot easier to use. So on the left, we have our flywheel, which is our core philosophy in the center of growth. At the top, it's constantly spinning, but you attract strangers or prospects. Um, you nurture them via our tools in our platform and your content and every other, other initiatives. You transfer them into prospects as they get engaged. You then convert them into customers. And when they become satisfied customers, they become promoters. And the theory is that wheel keeps on spinning and it just gets better and growth is at the center of it. So the customer platform, the sort of three key messages with HubSpot, it's a single source of information. The world is all about data nowadays. Without every business has data and data is at the center of everything and it's a single source of information where all your data resides. Um, it's an intuitive user experience. We're known for being an easy use platform to use compared to some more complex platforms. Um, and it's a unified code base, which means it works with many other applications, systems, integrations, and I'll explain a bit of that uh, a little bit on. We have our marketing hub originally, that was our first product. Then we had sales hub, service hub, CMS hub, which is for websites, and then operation hub, which really gels it all together. And that's our product suite at the moment that makes up our, our, our customer platform. So HubSpot started out many years ago. I and many of you might have remembered getting emails about marketing hub. Um, that was our first product. It's our most successful product, and it's our biggest product now. Uh, it represents about a billion in revenue of the total suite, but it has evolved into other complementary hubs like sales hub for your sales team, service hub for your service team, post sale, um, CMS for websites and operations as I mentioned earlier. And now we're at the stage where we have an, a comprehensive customer platform which is all of those hubs with, um, you know, in the flywheel model all working together to enhance the ultimate customer experience and success for each of your businesses. So our journey so far from a growth financial perspective. It was established in 2006 by our founders. In 2014, we floated on the New York Stock Exchange, um, turning over 100 million at the time. It's grown quite rapidly, as you can see. I joined in 2021 mid-COVID, and we were turning over a billion. And within the year, we were turning over 1.5 billion. So 50% growth during COVID was just off the charts and now it's getting a bit more steady at about 30% but we're heading towards 2 billion, 7,000 employees, uh, 1,400 app integrations with other complementary apps on the marketplace and over 185,000 customers and growing. So it's been quite the growth story and quite the journey. 
uh, and it it's continues to grow. But it's only growing because of our customers and our partners who are growing the business globally, and of course our own team. So. I mentioned earlier briefly about the app marketplace. This is over 1,400, as you can see, familiar logos there, from simple things like Gmail to you know, LinkedIn. You can integrate all those different platforms into HubSpot, and you can centralize all the data into the one single repository, which is our platform. So the customer journey, as all of you know, is quite complex. You don't just get an inquiry and they close generally. People look at your website or your channels, they, they don't come back. Some of them look at it again, they look elsewhere. So we call it quite a squiggly journey to get somebody from anonymous to a prospect, to a customer, to a promoter. So we try to simplify and assist that journey. And to do that, we've come up with five key pillars um, and they're color coded. So we have data, which everybody has. We have content, we have messaging. We have automation and then reporting. So everybody has data, but enhancing your data is really the end game and the ultimate goal. So the idea is you get your data at the start, you'd enhance it, you'd enrich it, you would centralize it preferably. Then you will generate content of which you will send to that database. You'll message that database with some of your content and you will automate a lot of that to save time and to free up your time to do other more meaningful task because repetition is very difficult and time inefficient and then you will report on the strength of that. So give you an example of just what each of those involves. So I don't need to explain to you what data is but in the context of HubSpot in our CRM we would have data like properties which would be a company or a prospect's name, their email or their company size. We would have activities so your team or your staff the calls they make, the emails they sent, the meetings you have, or the tasks you need to complete on foot of that are all in our system. And then you have objects, which may be deals, which may be quotes, maybe payments or service tickets. So that's your data. So once you have that data in the platform, it's there for you to view at any time, and it's all categorized. Then the content is whatever you decide to create, be it your marketing campaigns, your blog posts, your knowledge-based articles, or any other content, FAQs to save time. You can have chatbots answering them as well in our system. Then messaging is you can have one-to-one -one specific tailored messaging or you can have one-to-many depending on how you segment your audience and your database. And you can do that via channels such as email, live chat, bots, maybe text messaging, WhatsApp. There's multiple channels you can use. But the point is you can track them all in HubSpot and you can see what engagement you have had with any of your target audience at any period of time, or any of your sales team, or any of your service team, or your marketing team, depending on what communications are, are happening. The next piece then is automation. I mean, marketing automation is where we started. Uh, it's taking the manual repetitive tasks away from you and your team so that you can save a lot of time and money. Uh, so, for example, you can have a workflow and it can be a smart workflow. So if you email a client or a prospect and they take one of two routes, you can have different scenarios to give them content to address whatever way they behave. So if they open a particular document or if they look at a certain web page, you can send them then a smart message to say, I've seen you've been on such a page or pricing page or you opened a catalog or whatever content you sent them. And then you can continue the conversation for there. And you can have sequences then, which is, it allows you to do it at specific times of day or the month, or you can have a campaign spread out over a period of time, and you can decide to do five emails over six weeks at different periods, depending on how they respond or if they respond at all. So that's the idea of the automation piece. And then finally, when you have all that rich data in it, you can report on the success of all of those activities. So you can report on your email traffic, your web, social media traffic. You can, you can report on which leads became viable or which leads fell out of the funnel and you can report on various metrics like your monthly recurring revenue, your margin and those other metrics as well. So that's the reporting piece. So if you remember earlier we had the squiggly journey, we tried to make it a bit more linear and a bit more structured. So we're still going to have the anonymous prospect but if you market to them using Marketing Hub you're going to be able to attract them into your funnel and into your you know, into your, your radar. 
and then they become prospects, which you engage with them then, so you're emailing them, you're speaking with them, whatever channel you're using. Then you sell to them, so you want to track that sale. We, we use Sales Hub for that. And then they become a customer. So when they become a customer, what do you want to do? You want to keep them engaged. You might want to keep them informed of a new product or an event that's maybe coming up or whatever business you're in. You want to keep in contact with that customer so they will probably buy again or else, if not, at least they become advocates of your brand. So that's where the service piece comes in. You can do surveys, you can ask them for feedback, and our system keeps that all in the one area under that contact record. So you can see if they gave you feedback, or whether it was negative or positive, or if they responded to your service. Also, you can do service tickets. So if they have a, a problem, or a complaint, or a query, you can use Service Hub for that. So Ultimately, then, they become that promoter that we're all looking for that essentially markets your brand and helps uh, grow your own market share because you have happy customers. So the point of the five different sections, the point of the other logos of all those other companies, there's two reasons I show them. One is HubSpot can do what most of these tools can already do, so there's an opportunity for you to replace them with HubSpot, but we can also work with some of these tools. So, for example, and many of our customers are on WordPress. Even though we have our own CMS website product, we don't intend to take everybody off WordPress and put them onto CMS, because not everyone wants to disrupt their website or change it. However, we have functionality in our systems that do what most of these tools do. So from data to content, we have, you know, we can do website hosting. In messaging, we can do video messaging. We can do text messaging. In automation, we have all the other features, like I mentioned earlier, and then obviously reporting as well, which is key. So I hope that piece gives you a feel for the sort of key areas HubSpot can help with when you're approaching the market. Then I'd like to talk a little bit about Greece and our own customers. We have customers globally, but Greece is a growing market uh, for us in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, I work with about 14 different countries in Central Eastern Europe, and Greece is up there and growing with, uh, with them, which is really great. So we have many happy customers. I'm not sure if everyone is aware of our customers, but I'm going to give you a flavor of some of them. So this is really hot off the press because I was out with all of these customers last night in, in town. So we had a great night out, thanks to Demetrius from White Hat. So we had five companies here alone, which I'll show you later, well-known brands, but we had a lovely evening. It was really great to meet them and hear about their business and hear about HubSpot. So that's me in the back trying to, trying to get seen. So those customers are examples, Flexcar in Greece, a fantastic story, car as a service going into four and more countries. Vattenvolt, many of I presume of you would know, Qualco, Relcon, Delphi Economic Forum, Ocean King, Showwood, Voiceland, Ignatia, and many others. I just took a sample of local Greece companies that are, some are international and some are, are national, but they're all having a lot of success with HubSpot. The industries we work in in Greece, um, different scales obviously, but from the left to the right, Utilities is a big one, based on the client I just showed you earlier. And there's a, a range of sectors we can work in. So I won't read all of this out, but the point is people sometimes think HopeSpot isn't for me or not for my industry. The reality is it, we probably work in every industry globally, so don't let that put you off because we're, we, you know nearly every business, if you think about, has data, has customers, and has staff, and they need a platform to help them work with all of those elements. So they're the industries we work with in, in Greece. Uh, partners are a huge part of our network globally, and that's how we scale. You don't become a 2 billion, or in Salesforce's terms, a 70 billion, or Microsoft, a trillion dollar company by having your own sales team only. You need partners globally, and that's how we have scaled, because we have local partners in every country who know the market, speak the language, know the culture, absolutely know the product, and that's how we've been so successful even in Greece for the likes of Demetrius who's here from White Hat, Cleo and team from Digital, and some newer partners like iTrust, Upcom Minds, and there are some others as well, and some solution providers. So, you know, our customers get most success from working with partners because they know the product They've worked with companies like you many times, and they know how to get you up to speed really quickly, 
and they can help you even post-COVID times. Face-to-face -face is still really important. Being able to meet your client, go through your challenges and make, make progress. And people like to meet people as well, still. So that's our ecosystem in Greece. We have partners all over the world, but we're big advocates of working with your local partner. So some examples of global customers, just to give you an example. So we cover all these other industries. So big brands, medium-sized brands, small brands, charities, colleges, retailers, automotive is big for us. Um, we have many car brands who use, to give you an example, if you go for a test drive in a car, the salesman now or lady in the car dealership, instead of trying to give you brochures or email you the details afterwards, can have, depending on which car you test drive, when you arrive back at your house, if you leave them your email, you can have a full email automated with the car you drove, the price, the spec, and some of our customers in other car dealerships, their sales reps at the end of the day were spending one to two hours every evening after having done, say, 10 test drives, emailing the same brochure, the same price list manually, whereas now it's all automated and it can even be done on a mobile app. So there's different uses for HubSpot depending on what type of business you're in. So some use cases and results, just to share some actual success and some metrics for real brands, because we always read about you know, source at the bottom, or I'm giving you some general research that we did to show how our customers succeed, and I'm also gonna give you some local results from our partners and our customers in Greece. Am I speaking too fast? No, but you don't have much time. I'm over time, I won't be long. So, just some quick research. HubSpot's easy to adapt, so on average 51 or 35 days or 51 again for each of our products to get up and running. That's a short period of time to get your team up and running on a product. Um, return investment, our customers had found on average 130% leads, 36 more deals, and 37% in, uh, increase in ticket closure rates. Uh, some more stats I won't dwell on, but I will talk about Flexcar um, and some of their operations. They're using HubSpot in four countries, including Mexico. They're doing all their reporting based on it so their C-level can make the decisions, and they've also integrated it with their ERP. As have Qualco used it, they're using it for lead generation, they're automating workflows I discussed earlier, they're using it to qualify sales opportunities, and reporting again is key, and they're also doing all their websites on HubSpot. And finally, just to show you some results from the, the Greek companies I explained earlier, so Vattenvolt generated 300,000 leads with the help of HubSpot and their partner White Hat. Flexcar, 125,000 deals streamlined via HubSpot across four countries. So that's a startup that has grown with four different countries with standardized processes that all the teams are following and they're finding it very successful. The forum had lots of leads as well and production time, efficiency on events as well reduced. And finally, Qualco had a 10% increase on their overall annual targets and KPIs. So that's it from me. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I'm here all evening if anyone wants to say hello. Thank you.